Number three, Pennsylvania Railroad number 1361. One of only two of a staggering 425 K4 class Pacifics to survive, the 1361, built by the PRR's Juniata shops in 1918, was first placed on display at the famed Horseshoe Curve in 1957. In 1985, the engine was removed from the display site and taken back to the Juniata shops in Altoona for restoration. Two years later, the 1361 was ready to begin excursion service on the main line. Unfortunately, her rise to stardom would take a sour turn when she suffered a catastrophic failure of the main bearing and driving axle only one year after her return to service. Beginning in 1996, the 1361 was disassembled and moved to Steamtown National Historic Site in Scranton for rebuilding. The state of Pennsylvania originally granted $420,000 to the project, but gave an additional $600,000 in the year 2000. For the next decade, the locomotive's restoration progressed in fits and starts, until the Altoona Railroaders Memorial Museum ran out of money to fund the project. By 2013, the 1361 was off of Steamtown property. The tender, frame, and smaller components were moved home to Altoona, and the boiler was stored at the East Broadtop Railroad. Fortunately, there is hope for Pennsylvania's official state steam locomotive. As of this past summer, the boiler was reunited with the rest of the engine at the Railroaders Memorial Museum in Altoona. Furthermore, a small group of volunteers are making slow but steady progress on continuing the locomotive's rebuild in the new quarter roundhouse built on the museum grounds. While some might view 1361's story as a scarlet letter in railroad preservation, the fact that the project is back up and running again should be reason enough to keep the enthusiasts going. With time, effort, and more appropriated funding, there is a chance that the K-4 will steam again in the near future. Number 2. Frisco number 1522. I couldn't resist putting this engine on the list. It's become a well-liked engine, even after its retirement. But first, the backstory. The 1522 was one of 30 482 mountain-type locomotives built by Baldwin for the St. Louis-San Francisco Railway, better known as the Frisco. From 1926 to 1951, the locomotive hauled freight and passenger trains for the Frisco until diesels came along. After steam operations ended on the railroad in 1952, the 1522 was retired and then donated to the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, Missouri in 1959. In 1985, a new nonprofit organization called the St. Louis Steam Train Association selected the engine as a candidate for operational restoration. After three years of work, the 1522 was back under steam in 1988 and quickly began her new life as an excursion engine. Some noteworthy trips the engine undertook included excursions during the NRHS conventions in 1990, 1994, and 2001. The 1994 trip included a double header with Norfolk and Western 484 number 611 to Atlanta, Georgia. Also in 2001, the 1522 was chosen to power the BNSF Employee Appreciation Special Train through Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas over former Frisco trackage. The following year, things were to take a sad turn for the 1522 and the SLSTA. Due to rising insurance and repair costs, the group decided that number 1522 would be retired from excursion service at the end of 2002. After running a final pair of excursions from St. Louis to Newburgh, Missouri and back on the weekend of September 28th and 29th of that year, the loudest steam locomotive in the world was silenced. 
Today, the 1522 is on static display under one of the train sheds at the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis. All of the support cars, such as the canteen and crew cars, have been sold off to other steam operators, including the Age of Steam Roundhouse and the Friends of the 261. Whether or not the 1522 will steam again is a topic that some enthusiasts have tossed back and forth on. But chances are good that if someone has the money and the know-how to get the job done, this mountain of the Ozarks could have a chance of a second rebirth. Now, I know what you're thinking. Which engine could possibly top Frisco 1522? Well, there is one engine that had a short career, and is one that is somewhat overlooked, except in the region it came from. And so, here's my number one pick. Atlanta and West Point, number 290. An almost direct copy of the Southern Railway's famous PS4 Pacifics, the 290 was one of two such engines built in 1926 by Lima Locomotive Works for the Atlanta and West Point Railroad and its sister company, the Western Railway of Alabama. For nearly 30 years, the 290 and her sister engine, Western Railway of Alabama number 190, pulled their section of the Southern Railway's Crescent passenger train from Atlanta to Montgomery, Alabama. In 1954, the two engines were retired in favor of EMD F units and Jeeps. The 190 was sent off to the scrapyard, while the 290 was saved through the efforts of a group called the 290 Club. The locomotive was placed on display in the suburbs of Atlanta and sat until 1961, when it was donated to the Atlanta chapter of the National Railway Historical Society. In the late 1980s, the 290 was pulled out of the Southeastern Railway Museum in Duluth, Georgia to be restored to operation. She would take on a new career as the steam star of the New Georgia Railroad, succeeding Savannah and Atlanta number 750. Beginning in 1989, the 290 pulled the regular New Georgia excursions and even ran a few mainline trips on Norfolk Southern. The high points of her career included a brief appearance in the film Fried Green Tomatoes and a once-in-a-lifetime excursion to Montgomery, Alabama in 1992 over former a and trackage. Sadly, 1992 would be the last year that 290 would run. The state government in Georgia cut funding to the New Georgia Railroad, thus rendering the operation lifeless. The railroad's last excursion ran with former Southern Railway E units during the 1994 NRHS convention. Meanwhile, the 290 was returned to the Southeastern Railway Museum and placed again on static display. Today, the locomotive is undergoing a cosmetic restoration but operational restoration is being considered by the museum if conditions for mainline running are right. The short-lived career of this relatively unknown Pacific and her sole survivor status have assured her spot as my number one pick on the list of retired steam excursion stars. Do you have any other contenders for best retired steam excursion engine? If so, please leave your suggestions in the comments below, and I may include it in a future video. Also, if you'd like to support some of the engines mentioned in this program, website links are available in the description. Remember, every little donation goes a long way. But until next time, thank you very much for watching, and keep on steaming!